Hey friends, welcome back to another TV paint tutorial. This time I'm going to go into more detail about coloring using CTG layers. It may get a little complicated at times, but I'm going to do my best to break it down into bite-sized chunks. Check the description for timestamps of my different chapters within this video. What is CTG? It stands for Color and Texture Generator, and it's a really easy and quick way to color your animation. Let's jump right in! First, in order to use the color and texture layer, you will need to have an animation or some drawing already existing in your timeline. This is because the color and texture layer needs something to fill in. Like, if I shot a paintball into space, it's not going to know where to go. But if I shot a paintball into a cup, it would color the cup. Does that make sense? So, I have my animation featuring our boy, Party Puppy. Clearly he's excited to see your back for another video. He can hardly contain himself. Let's give him some color. Make sure you have the layer you want colored selected in your timeline. You can find CTG layers in your layer list section of your timeline. If you click new, it's the color and texture layer. Once you click it, it will create a new orange layer underneath your line art with the name C-O-L-O -O underscore layer name. Now, some things are noticeably different between CTG layers and anim layers. For instance, if I select my anim layer, my tool panel looks like this with all of these options available to me. But when I select my CTG layer, a lot of those options change or are grayed out. The CTG layer is pretty focused on coloring and texturizing. It doesn't need fancy tools like selection or creating shapes because it's depending on the line art for its boundaries. In our tools panel, it gives us two options, which are fill and erase. You can change the size just like a regular brush tool. Exclusion comes in handy when you have something like a character with their hands on their hips. You want to make sure that little area between the arm and the body isn't colored. Going back to our timeline area, as you can see, the division of keyframes is the same as our line art layer because it is sourcing from our line art layer. What do I mean by sourcing? Under our opacity slider for the color layer, it says one source. And if I click it, you'll see that our source is our line art layer. I could select more than one layer if I wanted my coloring to adhere to the lines of multiple layers, which does come in handy for shading and highlights, which I can show you later in the video. You can also change the source to a layer that is not the layer above the CTG layer. There's nothing forcing you to stay married to the layer you originally sourced from, which makes CTG layers super flexible. But for the sake of this video, we're going to keep it connected to Party Puppy. Let's take a closer look at these other buttons around our opacity slider of our CTG layer. To the left of the opacity slider, it says Color. Anim layers have this option as well. This is our Blending Mode tab. If we click, we can see a ton of options, much like you'd see in Photoshop or After Effects. And each one of these bad boys affects our color differently. I'm going to leave it on color since I'm using this as my base color. Above Blending Modes, we have three buttons. Create New Frame, which means if I scroll where there are no frames and I click, it'll create a frame for me. Toggle Auto Break. This means when I'm on a keyframe and I scroll to the middle or anywhere that isn't the start of that keyframe and I click, it will automatically create a new keyframe for me. When I made the CTG layer, that option is automatically off, so I can color no matter where my scrubber is on the keyframe I'm trying to color. Lock position is the tiny hand, and if it's enabled, I can't drag my frames around the timeline. I like to enable this because of how the CTG layer will automatically color, which will make sense in a few minutes. All of these options exist for anim layers as well, so if you're like, wait a minute, these look familiar, that's why. However, the next options are unique to our CTG layer. The lightning button, ka -chow. It helps you color in a flash, haha, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me color our first frame and I can show you what I mean. Select your CTG layer and choose a color and I'm going to swipe across where I want a color and BAM! It fills it in for us. This is a crazy smart layer, like genius level layer. Super smart, super fast. So TV Paint calls these lines squiggles, which I think is super cute. You can make a baby squiggle, a giant squiggle, a weird squiggle and it'll just fill in the area for you. If you want to change the color, you can either select another color and draw another squiggle. As long as your new squiggle is bigger than the first one, it should fill in the space. This is something that I like to do when I want to try out a bunch of colors really fast before picking one. Or you can choose the eraser in the tool panel and erase your squiggle. 
So with our lightning button enabled, with every swipe, the color is filled in automatically. If I disable the lightning button, I can draw my squiggles and they'll just hang out, chillin', until I slap that lightning button again and give them the okay to fill in the spaces. Mask button. This simply toggles visibility of my squiggles. Pretty straightforward. Palette button time. This is where it gets a little more in depth, but also more exciting. The palette button. If you click the drop down, you'll see a few different options. Our first option is edit colors. As you'll see, there are some colors in there already. They're the same colors that I've used to color my dear party puppy. If I feel like being organized, I can name my colors. If I choose a different color from the picker and place it on the stage, it will add that color to the list. I can also check the box next to use these colors only, and my color picker will disappear so I can only color with my chosen palette. I can also change my existing palette from this menu. If I double click the color, it will turn my cursor into a color picker. I can then choose any color on the screen and it will give me this little box arrow box thing. Basically that means I'm changing this color into this new color. I then hit apply changes and it will change every area that the previous color was in to our new color. In the same sort of way, I can delete colors by clicking the X on the right of any of the colors. I then hit apply changes and those colors disappear. The texturizer. I'm gonna skip that for this video. I think it might deserve its own video, which you can expect in the near future. Load structure from sources. Let's say I mess with my CTG keyframes, dragging them bigger or smaller. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I want my old structure back. As long as I line up my keyframe divisions to match my source, I can click load structure from sources and TV Paint will divide my CTG frames to match the divisions in my source layer. Apply current squiggles on empty instances. So I've colored the first frame of Party Puppy and I want these colors for the rest of my animation, but I don't wanna go through the trouble of coloring the head of each keyframe. I can click apply current squiggles on empty instances and TV Paint will work its magic. To take my squiggles from my colored frames and apply them to the rest of my empty frames. Now with Party Puppy, he is moving a bit, so my CTG squiggles won't hit the mark every time. That's when I would have to go in and erase and color more specifically when needed. I'm also skipping the next button, so... Yep, I don't know what it does yet, but I'll find out. If you go to Extract Color, you can make new layers with the colors, well, extracted, and you can see all our colors right there. So if I click Extract Separately, it will make a new layer for each color with new names. It's very helpful if you name your colors in the edit colors panel because those names will be used in these new layers. I think that just about covers the CTG options section of the layers panel. These options are pretty helpful when it comes to coloring. They can make things go much faster and CTG is already a pretty quick tool, but they don't cover everything and can even leave sections of your animation uncolored. Let's go through the rest of the frames and color party puppy that way. If we move on to the next frame, you can see that I messed up and left a chunk of unfinished line work. If I try to put a baby squiggle, the CTG layer is like, are you sure? I don't get what you're saying. If I put a giant squiggle, it's like, geez, okay, gosh, but I'm still a little confused. The best thing to do is to close your lines and make sure you don't have any big gaps. That being said, if you're coloring and suddenly you realize that you want to change something about your line art, it's not a huge hassle. You can go to your line art and erase, redraw, mess around with it, and back on the CTG layer, that squiggle of color stays put. The color may disappear, but the CTG squiggle stays. As soon as you close your lines back up, BAM! CTG fills in its area again. Let's fix that gap and keep on going. Fun tip time! If you have some part of your line art that stays along the same plane, up, down, diagonal, or whatever, you can drag the frames of the CTG layer and it will automatically fill that section for you. So you can scrub through however many frames and the CTG layer is smart enough to fill those in without you having to go frame by frame. But if your line art moves around a lot, this probably won't work. Whew, all right, we have covered pretty much all the basics for coloring with the CTG layer. So I'm gonna finish Party Puppy's base colors. Now that that is done, let's talk about highlights and shadows. I'm going to show you a simple way of highlights and shadows that I have done a bunch of times, but there is an option in the FX stack for highlights that I can go over in another video. I don't want to make this one too complicated. 
So if you're pulling your hair out that I'm not just going straight to the FX stack, please don't worry, I will cover it in another video. I'm going to make a new anim layer and name it Shadows. Let's choose a bright color that doesn't match any color we've already got. Sick. I'm going to draw where I'd like my shadows to be. I don't have to close these lines, I can just swoop off any section that I want to shadow. Sometimes I'll put a little X so I don't get confused later on. Okay, neat. We have our shadows marked off. Now I'm going to make a new CTG layer source to this shadow layer. I'm going to click on our sources and keep the current layer as well as add on our party puppy line art. Now I'm sourcing from both of these and my CTG squiggles will adhere to both layers lines. I'm going to fill in my shadow sections. And when that's all filled in, I can go to my shadow layer and lower the opacity to zero. I'll usually keep this layer until I'm 110% sure I'm finished and never want to make any changes ever again to the shadows. Once I reach that point where I know I'm not going to make any future changes, I right click my shadow layer and select Make Anim. This converts our CTG layer to an anim layer and therefore these color sections are going to stay put even if I delete my shadow line layer. There's no squiggles, it's just like a fill bucket. Now I can change my blending mode separately from my base color, erase tiny sections, and change it in all the ways that I can change an anim layer. So there you have it! That is a mini deep dive into coloring with CTG layers in TV Paint. You are now ready to color to your heart's content, friends! Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to watch this tutorial. If you enjoyed yourself, please consider liking and commenting. And if you want to see more of this sort of thing, plus other animated content, please subscribe. I'd love to have you stick around. Have a super freaking amazing day! I love you! Bye!